VLSI Design and Testing 21 EC63 Module 2. Uh, in Module 2, uh, we will be studying on fabrication steps, complete fabrication process of CMOS, then delay, introduction, transient response, RC delay model, linear delay model, logical effects of parts. These are the topics which we will be studying in Module 2. Okay. So first let us uh, take the first topic as CMOS fabrication and layout. So CMOS fabrication and layout uh, here, uh, MOSFET scaling and small geometry effects, MOSFET capacitances, all these things we will be studying. But here designers need to understand the physical implementation of circuits because it has a major impact on performance, power and cost. So transistors are fabricated on a thin silicon wafer that serves as both a mechanical support as well as an electrical common point called a substrate. So substrate selection of substrate is very important. So this is the cross section of an inverter which corresponds to the schematic of inverter what we have studied in module 1. Here the inverter is built on a p-type substrate. As you can see here it's a p-type substrate. Okay, substrate is p. The p-mos transistor requires an n-type body region so an n-well is created here. n-well has to be created for the CMOS uh, inverter structure. The n-mos has heavily doped n-type source and drain regions. Okay. And a polysilicon gate over a thin layer of silicon dioxide. N plus and P plus diffusion regions heavily doped. P plus N plus shows that they, the regions are heavily doped. The PMOS is a similar structure with P type and source, with P type, source, and drain regions. The polysilicon gates of these two transistors are tied together to form the input A. Okay, this is where we give the input A. The source and of PMOS is connected to metal line VDD and drains of the two transistors are connected with metal to form output Y. And these are the drains which connects and this is your output Y. Okay. The substrate must be tied at to a low potential to avoid forward bias in the PN junction between the P-type substrate and the source and drain. Similarly, the N-well must be tied to high potential. This is done by adding heavily doped substrate and well contacts are connected to ground and VDD to the substrate and N-well respectively. So this is this structure to form this structure. There are so many process steps has to be followed in during fabrication. Uh, the fabrication sequence is consists of a series of steps in which the layers of chips are defined thoroughly through a process called photolithography. Okay, the inverter can be defined by six masks. N well, polysilicon, N plus diffusion, P plus diffusion, contacts and metal. Okay, masks where the components will be manufactured on the chip. Okay, so now we'll see. Uh, so this is the uh, figure which shows a top view of the all the six masks. The cross section of the inverter from the previous figure was taken along the dashed lines. These dashed lines cross section of the uh, inverter. So N well, polysilicon, N plus diffusion, P plus diffusion, contact and metal. These are the six different types of marks that we will be using in CMOS fabrication. So the fabrication process begins with the creation of an base P-type silicon wafer. Okay, so this is the cross section which shows the manufacturing and N, manufacturing and N well. So selection of P-type substrate is very important for an NMOS transistor and uh, the wafer is first oxidized in a high temperature furnace using silicon and oxygen to react and become SiO2 which becomes SiO2 on the wafer. The oxide must be pattern to define the N-well. It is pattern to define the N-well using photoresist that softens where the, it is exposed to light. The photoresist is exposed through an N-well mask that allows the light to pass through, which allows the light to pass through only where the well should be. Okay, so this is where we want the well. Only there the lights are, uh, UV light is made to pass through. The softened photoresist is removed to expose the oxide. The oxide is etched with hydrofluoric acid where it is not protected by the photoresist. So this, is, this part is etched. 
then the remaining photoresist is stripped away using a mixture of, of acids called uh, pir pirana acid H, which is called as pirana H. The well is formed where the substrate is not covered with oxide. Two ways to add dopants. One is diffusion and ion implementation. Okay. But in the diffusion process, the wafer is first placed on the furnace with a gas containing the dopants. When heated, the dopants atoms diffuse into the substrate. When I, using ion implementation, dopant ions are accelerated through the electric field and they are blasted into the substrate. In either methods, the oxide layer prevents at dopants atoms entering into the substrate where no well is intended. This is how we create the end well. Okay, the same thing is with here. Okay. So after the creation of end well, the next step is to uh, form polysilicon and end diffusion regions. Okay, the transistor gates are next formed. That, that is your polysilicon material and this consists of polycrystalline silicon generally called as polysilicon over a thin oxide layer okay the thin oxide is grown on the furnace then the wafer is placed in a reactor with silane gas SiH4 and heated again to grow a polysilicon layer again the polysilicon layer is placed here the polysilicon is heavily doped to form reasonably good conductor the wafer is patterned with photoresist and polysilicon mask leaving the polysilicon gates atop the thin gate oxide. The N plus regions are introduced. The N plus regions are introduced for the transistor active area and the well contact. Same as we did with the well, a protective layer, a layer of oxide is formed and patterned with the N diffusion mask, then exposed to UV light where the dopants are needed. N plus regions are formed with ion implementation. They they were actually historically diffused and thus still are often called as end diffusion. Finally, the protective oxide is stripped off. Okay, so this is how the PD, uh, N plus diffusions and the polysilicon layers are formed. Okay, so that is the complete procedure of uh, uh, CMOS uh, fabrication. Okay, so this is the CMOS technology, wafer formation, photolithography, uh, what is the regions of dopants, polysilicon, metal and contacts are defined, they are the mask. Where the mask is absent, the implantation can occur. The patterning is called photolithography. Okay. The primary methods for defining areas of interest is by photoresist. Whatever we have done, gate, N plus, P plus diffusion regions, all are done using photolithography. Okay. The same thing is written here. So, well and channel formation, uh, N well process, P well, different process is called as N well, P well, thin well fabrication process. In P well process, N MOS transistors are built in a P well. Okay. So, N MOS, P MOS transistors are built in a N well. In the N well process, each group of P MOS transistors in an N well shares the same body, same substrate. In twin well process, it optimizes each transistor type. The third well can be added to create triple well process, three wells. The triple well process has emerged to provide good isolation between the analog and digital blocks in mixed signal chips. Okay. So, well and channel formations are also are, are done using another process called as epitaxy, which involves growing a single crystalline film on the single silicon wafer. Okay, epitaxy helps to prevent latch up. The step called chemical vapor deposition is done. Used, it is used for deposition. Okay. So, this is gates and source. Whatever I have explained with the figure, the same thing I have written here. Then, at the end, contact and metallization. Contact cuts are made to uh, source, drain, and gate. In some processes, Tungsten metal is used. Metallization is a process of building wires to connect devices. Okay, aluminium can be deposited either by evaporating or sputtering. Evaporation is performed by passing a high electric current through a thin, uh, thick aluminium wire. Sputtering is achieved by generating a gas plasma by ionizing an invert gas using an RF and DC electric field. Okay. And passivation is the final processing step to avoid protective glass layer called passivation or over glass that prevents the uh, contaminants. Okay, after passivation, the further steps can be performed such as bumping, which allows the chip to be directly connected 